this. And a couple more buttons I have to push, Stephanie. And we're gonna, I don't think I need to do that now, do I? Okay, we'll, we'll do it anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going a little bit long today because I have a very special guest who's agreed to be on with me. And uh, let me ID so I don't have to do it in a couple of minutes. You're listening to the Louis B. Free Radio Show, Brain Food from the Heartland, Copper at B. Free Radio Limited, 2022 uh, by the lovely Miss Bunny Face in cooperation with White Rabbit Productions. I'm honored to have Stephanie Warren Grimmer on. You heard me talking about, I love this book, 5,000 Awesome Facts About Animals. Stephanie, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. So let's talk about you first. Tell us about you. Um, I am a science journalist by training. Um, I used to write for adults, but I fell in love with writing for children. And so now that's all I do. I write news stories and um, lots of books for kids about all kinds of science topics. <laughs> So how, tell me a little bit more about that. Again, science journalists, I've, I've got a lot about your background. Science journalism from New York uh, University Science Health and Environmental Reporting Program. How did, tell me that. Yeah, that's great. So um, I have always been interested in science. Um, in college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I kind of decided to just major in something I found interesting. Um, so I chose biological anthropology, which is just a fancy term for human evolution studies. Um, I loved it, but I didn't have a lot of interest in going and digging up bones in the desert. Um, I found that I really loved sort of the stories of science. And um, I was reading a book for one of my classes one day and flipped it over to the author bio and read that she was a science journalist or a science writer. And I thought, oh, I had no idea that that was a career that you could do. Um, so I ended up going to grad school in New York um, to study science writing. And uh, that is what I do today. It's a lot of fun. I, I love when you say uh, in your bio at your website that uh, you like, uh, Stephanie likes science the same way she likes pastries. She enjoys consuming the results of other people's labor, but isn't so keen on doing the work herself. I thought That's that was right. Great. I get to just do the fun part. The pet like pastries and you get to ask and talk with people and then make it, I, I like how you work with, with, for kids. Now you're doing it for young people. It's so mm -hmm. important, always has been even more so today to stimulate that young brain, um, Tell me a little bit. Oh, Go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I have sort of a selfish reason for doing it. It's not totally altruistic. Um, although I do, you know, I, I get a lot of pleasure out of the fact that um, I, I feel like it's important work, but I am just sort of a curious person myself. And I think that I have like a kid level interest in the world. I love the weird and gross and amazing. And um, that's what kids love. And so it's a, it's a fun excuse to delve into, you know, what we kind of consider kid topics like um, dinosaurs, but which, you know, space, uh, stuff that I just find totally cool and, and fascinating. So I kind of get to, uh, you know, live out my inner kid, which is a fun perk. That's one, you know, and, and hopefully you'll never lose that childlike wonder. I, I know I get criticized for being that way sometimes it, at my old age but it, i just i wouldn't want to be any other way i still love well life. i child like wonder is kind of the job <laughs> yeah, that's for you yeah it is so let's talk about this five thousand awesome facts about animals again i just i love it it's such a compilation of really interesting things and i i understand it's in that geo kids book I, I understand that the target and you were, were talking about writing for kids. I'm an old man. And I loved it. And I'd get oh, excited. Say, oh, look at this. Oh, listen to that. Oh, look at that. You know, so yeah. Uh, how, how do you put something like this together? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're right that, you know, weird fun facts are really for everybody. And um, sometimes people ask me how you write for kids and it's really not that different from writing for adults. Um, 
we maybe we think we're super sophisticated as adults, but uh, kids are pretty much right up there with us. They can understand a ton. Um, and it's just about capturing, you know, the most interesting stuff. Um, for Nat Geo, they have, have a very specific voice and that voice is weird, but true. So there are, you know, a ton of facts in the world. A lot of them are interesting or amazing, but to go in the book, they have to be weird, but true. Um, and so that's a pretty high bar. Um, I can, I can give you a couple of examples, please, um, Stephanie, please. a few weird, but true facts. Let's see. Um, a black mamba can slither faster than a human can run, which is terrifying because that is one of the most yeah. Sorry. venomous snakes in the world. Um, can run faster, is, excuse me, that a person can slither faster than a human can run. And as you right. said, I know I'm re echoing you, but again, one of the most poisonous snakes in the world. So that's, that's right. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Very that terrifying. Um, let's see a few more. Um, there are ants of a particular species that will explode if they sense a threat to the colony, sort of the suicide bombers of the animal world. Fantastic. Um, and uh, here's a dark one. There's an expert who estimates that mosquitoes have killed half of all of the humans ever born, which is pretty astounding when you think about it. It is. And again, you being able to to bring all these forward in the book. And the book, of course, as always, folks, I like to say it is a it's a Nat Geo Kids book. It's available everywhere and, and everywhere online. Please try to buy it as close to home as possible especially if you have an independent bookseller. But even the, the chains in your community uh, are employing people in your community and helping the economy of the community. But again, of course, everywhere online, Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. Again, 5,000 right. awesome facts about animals. And Stephanie Orn Rimmer is and my guest. When you think about some of these, again, I was reading about, about bees and just some of the things that we don't, you know, bees, is, it's a big concern of mine, you know, so the pollinators, the butterflies, the bees and our food system, et cetera. Um, what really, again, you, this is the, your work. What else would you say in the book was really like, oh, wow. And when you were- Oh, when you, were you know, through. pretty much everything really yeah. <laughs> make me go, wow, to, to get into the book. Um, but there are a ton of sort of backstories behind some of these facts, deeper dives that I didn't have a chance to, to get into in the book if we just have space for little short snippets. Um, for example, one of the facts in the book is that a grizzly bear's bite is strong enough to crush a bowling ball, which is amazing in and of itself. Um, but what we didn't have space to get into in the book is that that's not even the strongest bite in the animal kingdom. Um, that title actually goes to the saltwater crocodile. And um, it's a little tough to uh, conceive of how strong their bites are. So you can kind of put it into context by thinking about your own. So um, you or I might tear into something really tough like a steak with um, about 200 pounds per square inch of force, 200 PSI. A grizzly bear clocks in at about 1,000 PSI, so that's enough to crush a bowling ball. But a saltwater croc totally blows it out of the water. It has about 3,700 PSI. That's hard to understand. Just think of the weight of a rhinoceros pressing on a single inch of your skin. Um, that is oh, a strong wow. croc saltwater crocodile bite. And um, that's totally amazing. But my favorite sort of behind the scenes about this fact is it made me wonder, well, how did the researchers figure this out, right? Yeah. Um, turns out kind of like you would think they uh, spent a lot of time wrestling with crocodiles, trying to get them to bite onto this device that they made that they described as a very expensive, very durable, waterproof, bathroom scale. So, <laughs> so that's a little like fun science. And I, love that. I love that. The research is you've got, to, I know you love your, your, your work. It's fantastic. You, you've got a cat, correct? I do have a cat, cat and, and a I, dog. And a dog. Yeah. Because I read that in your bio about the cats. Uh, oh boy. Where is it? Uh, it seems like uh, uh, the cat 
sleeps more than should be possible for anything that's actually alive. I love that. Yeah, that she's also. 14, so she has an excuse. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. We were talking about that's the age excuse, right? See, you that's right. Enjoy your youth, but there are some advantages, very few advantages for being old. I love the <laughs> 100, the 100 furry facts about domestic cats. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the spreads in the book. There's a, yeah, a lot of, a lot of facts about cats. Um, one fact about cats that I find really interesting off the top of my head is, is that cats only meow to humans. They don't meow to other cats. Um, that is a language like specific between your cat and yourself. So when your cat meows at you, it's, it's talking right to you. Yeah. And I, I thought some, some of the other one, how they sweat through their paws again, I know I'm can't go through the whole book because there's so much folks it would take i was gonna say hours days but that that right. I learned a lot of things from that again that yeah it's great if you have a, a child or grandchild you can go through the book or let the kids go through the book but and read read to them but for adults i've got to say again definitely for adults i just i pour through this and and love it and the the, the different things about the farm animals, the, just everything. The panda section was great. I'm I'm rolling, right? I'm rolling. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, you know, one of the fun things about a book like this, especially for kids, but for interested adults too, is that, um, you know, a lot of kids are sort of reluctant readers. Um, they maybe don't want to sit down and read a chapter book that takes yeah. a lot of patience, a, a lot of focus. Um, these fact books are just a really great way to kind of break kids who may be like that into reading um, because you don't have to read it cover to cover. It doesn't require a ton of focus. You can pick it up. You can flip through it, read a couple of facts, you know, impress your friends, stump your parents, yeah. and um, then you can put it down and pick it up again later. And so it's sort of like an easy way to um, to encourage kids to delve more into this stuff. And then if they find themselves, you know, particularly interested in a specific type of animal, then you can go to the library, check out some books about the animal, look it up online, watch some science videos. Um, so it's kind of a cool way to, um, you know, pique kids' interest in science and nature. And Stephanie, thank you for mentioning the library. I'm a huge fan. My audience knows, huge fan of the library. I even have a- Yes. Did you know they have free books there? Free books at the library. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. And all the resources and and uh, take your kids, get them into the library at a young age and the lifetime, hopefully make lifetime readers. And my my t-shirts, I love my library. I've got a collection. Oh, of yes. Big fan. I'm a big fan of the library. They're wonderful. They're, you, you know, uh, I could get into a whole rant about libraries. I remember early days of the internet when people were predicting that there we, we wouldn't need libraries. We need them more than ever now as good sources, I think. We'll always have, always will. I'm well, I use them all the time because I need research books and, um, you know, it'd be very expensive to go buy a bunch of books. And I know I just said this, but it's kind of amazing. You walk in there and there are just unlimited books for free. They're, yes. I'm like, how many can I take? They're like 15. Yeah. Bring them back whenever you want. <laughs> whenever you, you know? want. Yeah. We don't charge. We don't have fines I anymore. I know that our library system here in the community doesn't have doesn't do fines anymore if they're late. I'm not sure how that's going to all work out in the long run. I mean, they'll charge you for a book if it's obviously too long, but it's it's just, it's wonderful and great resources. And even if they do, you know, it's a nickel. Like it's, it's, I know, I know. It's a lot yeah. cheaper than buying books. <laughs> that's right. You could have a book for who knows how long, for a nickel or dime a day or whatever. I don't know. I don't right. know it was before they stopped it because I always got mine back on in time. Do you, anything, you know, I'm a, a big rabbit fan. Anything on rabbits that you might want to mention? Oh my gosh. Um, you were really, really I'm testing sorry. me off the yeah, top I, of my I head don't, that's, here. That's terrible because it's five. I, I Let me apologize. Stephanie, it's 5,000 facts. I don't it's expect. A lot of facts. I should. Yeah, I should. Yeah. You tell us one more, if you would, that you're, that intrigued you. Um, sure. Uh, I got really deep into reading about humpback whales. Um, you know, there's a fact in this book that humpbacks can sing for 20 minutes straight, um, which is totally amazing in and of itself. But when you kind of get the full story, it's even more amazing. Um, their calls can be heard for 20 miles. 
And humpbacks actually have what we as humans would recognize as hit songs. So scientists realized that all of the humpback males in a population will sing the same song at the same time. And um, over time, so, you know, they have this sort of hit song that's, that's in their heads, they're all singing it. And um, over time, individuals will kind of tweak the songs that they sing, they'll add, you know, a few notes here or a verse here. And some of those changes are really catchy. And so other humpback whales in the area will hear that and go, oh, I like that. And they'll add that to their song. And so what you get is over time, these songs sort of change and evolve. And what happens is every few years, a totally new song emerges. So every few years, the humpbacks have a new, you know, what we would think of like a hit of the summer. That's great. Um, I love that. I love that. It, yeah, it's amazing. You've got to love your your gig, your work, because again, you get to explore and find out all these things and then help compile them. Again, I love this book, folks. You will love it too. You know, you can gift it, by the way, also, but gift yourself one. Give yourself one because you are going to absolutely love 5,000 awesome facts about animals. Again, available everywhere and everywhere online. Stephanie, I'm just so honored to have you on. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to talk so far because there's so much, so much I want to talk with you about, but thank you. <laughs> thanks for doing the well, thank you for having me. And thanks for the work that you do, because again, there's children out there. I know young people that you're going to inspire that will carry on the type of work you're doing and who knows where it'll take them. And I love the fact that if they're not it, getting them into reading at one fact at a time, as opposed to read this book. I love that. Absolutely. I think that it's so important to kind of meet kids where they are. And if, you know, your kid is really into these fact books, that's awesome. Get them more fact books, you know, and if your kid is into graphic novels, great, go to the library, check out graphic yeah. novels, library. Um, kind of meet, okay. yeah, meet them where their interests are. And, you know, if you foster that over time, they're going to get into reading bigger, longer books, chapter books, they're, you know, you're going to help foster that love yeah. of whatever they're into. And if it's science, you know, awesome. If it's something else, it, that's great. And make them lifetime readers. That's absolutely wonderful. An honor to have you on. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't keep you too long. No, you're good. Thank you so much. Do it again, Stephanie. Thank you. How about All that? Right. How, okay. about, how wonderful. Again, I, I so strongly recommend this book for buy it, and buy it and gift it, by the way. Buy it and gift it. I really would suggest that you gift it. You you got